Welcome back to another episode of the Scoreboard. It is time. Finally, NFL season is among us again. It is early September. We're getting started with a few good weather games, hopefully, before we get into the inevitable uh, winter season. It is kickoff time. Smokey, how are you doing? Oh, man. You know what? I am. I'm not really good right now in my personal life because I'm sick right now. But other than that, I am good in my football world here because I am better than Florida fans. I don't know if you saw that game, but Florida got stomped out by Miami of all teams. Miami hasn't been good since the turn of the century. And here they are just completely molly whopping Florida all up and down the field. The only highlight for Florida is that they lost Graham Murray which you would think is that's a bad thing they lost their starting quarterback he's been in college for six or seven years however long it's been but dj legway the guy who's taken over he is a true freshman but he's supposed to be really good and i think from what i saw from him he is actually better than graham mertz so that could be a highlight for florida but other than that i'm just glad they got stomped out how are you alex yeah i'm i'm good i'm better than um uh, let's see who am I better than? Uh, who are the Niners playing this week? I'm better than Jets fans preemptively because they're playing the Niners. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm... I don't know, man. All my other teams are doing badly. Like the Giants and do baseball are doing bad. The, everyone sucks. <laughs> I have not not a lot not of things to be better than, but maybe I'm, I'm better than like Vikings fans or something because it's not looking good pre- yeah preseason already it's not not looking great or panthers or so, something something like that sam darnold um, breakout season coming up uh, yeah that's the thing right even that yeah. even, even even darnold that does at least something yeah you know? he, he's gonna pull the not, not the, the geno smith ever. you know the geno smith and breakout this year maybe maybe and get paid get paid in a yeah. big way right yeah jj mccarthy's out anyway so he's a solidified but yeah, let's see how it goes he might have a might have a shot here but uh, i'm excited to have the season back it's, oh, uh, yeah. it's been a while since the USFL ended. Going without football, always difficult. Training camp is notoriously the absolute worst time of the year because there's nothing going on. There's no draft coming up. There's absolutely nothing going and uh, nothing public happening. And NFL media becomes the absolute worst thing in the world because <laughs> they have to somehow you know, write all these articles and 24-7 TV coverage. And it's just the most redundant crap of all time all the time and repeat it over and over again because they have nothing to write about so i'm glad there's games now uh because there's something going to be something to cover at least let's hop into these what do you say yeah definitely all right week one so we are starting off with a repeat of the afc championship game with a potential uh well a lot of people would say um projection of the upcoming AFC Championship game, the Ravens and the Chiefs. Yeah, Ravens and the Chiefs. Uh, Like always, the Super Bowl winner plays the very first game of the season. It's always fun when you can line it up to get a Super Bowl rematch. I know we got that, what, 2016 or whatever it was. I wish that would have happened here, but uh, here we are. Uh, I am worried about the Ravens. I'm worried about Lamar Jackson. Coming off of an MVP season, this team has taken a decline over the offseason. And that offensive line does not look good right now. Um, I mean, maybe Mark Andrews being healthy is going to help out there. And uh, having Derrick Henry there, which a lot of people predict, like, oh, this is... I guess you could call it a resurgence for Derrick Henry, although he never really fell off, uh, per se. So uh, maybe they think he'll just continue doing what he's doing, but even better. But I don't I don't see that because the offensive line is going to be so bad, in my opinion. The Chiefs coming off the Super Bowl, yeah, they're not the Chiefs of a few years ago, but they still win Super Bowls, and they still have Travis Kelsey, and they have some criminals out there catching balls. I'm taking the Chiefs. To follow this one up and win at home. Some uh, disproportionately unpunished criminals as well. If we look around yes. the league and see other uh, other players doing the exact same thing, kind of not walking away with any kind of suspension. Um, I will actually maybe make the first bold pick here of the season in the Ooh. first game. I'll take the Ravens uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one is the Derrick Henry. Uh, Lamar Jackson combination, which adds another element to that already very strong run game. And that offensive line has been a strong suit uh, for the Ravens for a long time. So I'm, I'm expecting that run game to remain strong. Mm. Um, and I think this this is going to be like a one-two punch that it'll take the league a little bit to get used to. 
Uh, on the other hand, the Chiefs don't usually open very well. If you if you think back to the last few years, Chiefs generally are not the greatest in the very early um, parts of a season. Last year, you remember they they lost their home opener uh, to Detroit, which was a very unexpected upset loss. And uh, they they're capable of doing this. They're capable of losing these kinds of games. I'm going to say Baltimore comes out a little bit more hungry. Revenge on the mind. They thought they were supposed to win the AFC Championship last year. uh, And it got stolen from them, right? They they feel like it got stolen from them at home in their own stadium. So they'll come in uh, very motivated. I think they'll they'll walk out with a win. Take advantage of the early season uh, sort of Kansas City hangover that we are already known to seeing. It's an upset pick, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take the Ravens. Let's see what happens. We have the Packers and the Eagles. There's so many intriguing games. This is also one of them. <laughs> yeah. You want me to throw in a bold prediction here? I don't know how bold it would be, but go ahead. <laughs> well, that, not, <clears throat> excuse me. Not necessarily for this game, but one of the players oh, in this game has to do with one of okay. my bold predictions for the season. But that is that Jordan Love will be in the running for the MVP by the end of the season, uh, along with the winner, Jared Goff, as I said uh, last week, you know. Jared Goff, okay. Yeah, but uh, I, I do think Jordan Love is going to be right there in the mix <laughs> this year, and people are really high on Jordan Love. Apparently not as big as Ky- Kyler Murray. We will talk about them later, but I don't understand why everybody is so on Kyler Murray right now. It just doesn't make sense. Jordan Love looks great coming off of his spectacular run at the very end of the season last year and into the playoffs all the way up to his very last pass. He looked absolutely phenomenal. The Eagles were in shambles at the end of that season, and they also lost a Kelsey this offseason. So their line is not looking as good as it did last year. I think the tush push might be a thing of the past because the NFL is called on to that anyway right and how many times can you get lucky enough to land on the one yard line unless you're just doing it on purpose and you're stopping touchdown drives just so you can do that one move which would be ridiculous i think the eagles are in a decline they are going to continue it here the packers are on the way up their trajectory looks nice i'll be taking the packers on the road yeah so i'm 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 having a lot of trouble here picking another road underdog and since i've already done it i will disagree with you again a lot of dynamics going on right away here early in the season with disagreements i'll take philadelphia i don't think that the eagles are going to have the better season compared to the packers so uh, i'm not confident in saying hey like 17 weeks from now we're going like the eagles are going to have a higher uh, playoff seeding than the packers um but opening up the season they do come in with that extra experience. They do open at home. Playing in Philly is notoriously difficult. Um, and a young team like the Packers may suffer from that sort of atmosphere in a season opener a little bit more than than a team like the Eagles would. As for Jordan Love, I mean, is it? A, I guess it's a bold prediction because we've only he's only played like a a really good half season and a kind of a, a mediocre half season and pretty good playoffs. Or, or, like, decent playoffs for a first-year starter. I'm, I'm guessing he's always been in the league for a while. Uh, but I do agree with your take about the Eagles. I think they are on the decline. I think 2023 was probably the their peak when they were, like, truly unstoppable uh, offensively. And then they got figured out. Because their offense is very gimmick-based. And unless they can sort of transcend from that, and I don't know if Nick Sirianni can... I'm not seeing them going very far in the playoffs this year. But I think they can hold the fort uh, against the Packers at home mm. and get their first win here. We have the Steelers at your Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Man, this is scary right here. Like, Have the Falcons improved or not? Uh, have the Steelers improved or not with Russell Wilson back there? A lot of people don't believe in Russell Wilson. Uh, but got to be better than Kenny Pickett was, right? Uh, you know, maybe the Falcons are doing the exact same thing. You know, it's really weird how these two teams have been parallel lately. You know, we, we changed coaches and Tomlin is still in the Steelers. But think about the quarterback position. We both drafted a young quarterback in the same draft, and they lasted the exact same amount of time. And we both 
uh, dipped into the I almost said the transfer portal like it's college, but we we dipped into free agency to find our veteran, bring him on out here. Let's see if we can win some games. The Steelers are in the same boat as the Falcons. That makes this game interesting. Russell Wilson versus Kirk Cousins. No one would think you would see this matchup with the jerseys involved that the two are going to be wearing, but here we are. Interesting times. Um, great wide receivers all over the field. Great tight ends. This is going to be a barn burner. Two good offenses that... Uh, have no defenses to back them up. Um, I think the Falcons defense is going to be absolutely horrible this year, but hopefully Kirk Cousins can keep this offense rolling enough to get us a win right here at home taking the Falcons. I know the Falcons have improved their quarterback drastically. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the Steelers did. Judging from the last two years of Russell Wilson and the, the like, the sort of expected development I would have expected from Kenny Pickett going from year one to year two, I don't know if the Steelers are got, have gotten a whole lot better, and I also don't know if Russell Wilson's going to start this whole season. I have serious reservations about it because there's Justin Fields there as well, who um, was sort of in a similar position as Kenny Pickett. They couldn't quite make it long term with the team that ended up drafting him, and now he's getting a um, sort of a good shot in Pittsburgh to take over for this aging veteran that hasn't been able to perform outside of Seattle uh, the way that we, well, well, the way that he did in Seattle. So I like the Falcons' season aspirations. I think they're quite substantially favored to win their division, which should be very good news for you, and I think it's it's justified. And I also like him in this game. They're, they're playing at home. I think Kirk Cousins is going to have a very good sort of opening showing and deliver a solid W to Atlanta. Maybe it's the start of some winning football, which hasn't happened in about eight years. So um, should be should be good news for you. I'm I'm a big believer in the Falcons this year. Kirk Cousins gets it done. We have the Cardinals at the Buffalo Bills. Mm. You know, it seems like they really strategically planned out this week one to get teams that are on the same uh, standing, you know, got teams that are headed in the same direction, teams that could be almost equivalent when you look at them side by side. And here's another one, because the Bills seem like they're going down in their offense this year because they don't have any receiving weapons. That's what I'm worried about this team. The, yeah, they, could, they have some good running backs, uh, Ray Davis and, and uh, Cook out there. They have the running backs. They have no one catching the ball outside of their two tight ends. I do like the tight end duo, though. I think they're going to be uh, very special with uh, Dalton and Knox out there. I think the, that's going to be their route here. Um, Jesus Christ. I just How did I forget the quarterback's name? <laughs> Josh Allen? <laughs> yes. Dude, it's the cold. It's the cold. <laughs> You're sick. Man. You're I sick. Even, it's I can't right. even yeah, think, man. Yeah. Uh, but Josh Allen is going to have to go to both the tight ends if he's going to make it work because until he develops a wide receiver, maybe Keon Coleman will come through. I know a lot of people believe in it, but um, like I was saying, everybody believes in Kyler Murray, which is really weird. I don't know that he's just going to have this drastic MVP season that everybody's predicting him to have. I think he's going to be decent he, he's not gonna break out i don't get why everyone's saying that i guess i'll eat crow if he does but whatever bills are at home i will be taking the bills here yeah you gotta you gotta show me some of those alleged people that you're talking about oh dude i will Murray to have any yeah any really people yes. still do that yes that's like they like that's like the same people that predict that colin kaepernick's coming back or something like Dude, this has been this has been done for like half a decade. Kyler yes. Murray is exceptionally mediocre quarterback uh -huh. who doesn't have a lot of tricks up his sleeve, and he's surrounded by an, a below average team. There's I don't see any parity between these two teams. I, I see the Bills as a top five, top seven, top five team, uh, sort of taking away that receiver issue, and I guess the Cardinals is a bottom five team. Uh, this is wow. very, very clear to me. This should be a whole like the Bills should be a whole touchdown favorite if I were making the lines here. I'm giving it to Buffalo at home. Very little doubt. I mean, uh, yeah, Marvin Harrison. Okay, yeah, sure. But they drafted a big name. I don't believe in Kyler Murray at all. I never have. Uh, I, I never, I never thought he was good. I don't think. I, I don't think he ever was good in in any particular any particular way. 
if you remember last week, I, I predicted Jonathan Gannon to be one of the, if not the first head coach to get fired during the season. Mm-hmm. I don't expect anything out of Arizona. I expect him to win three games, three, four games. This <laughs> wow. Year. They're bad. <laughs> That's yeah. a bold Maybe prediction. Maybe that's like an extra, di- <laughs> extra like division rival hatred or whatever, but nah, I don't, I don't see people talking up Kyler Murray. I don't. I don't. Oh, Jesus. Not, I'll, not, not, not I'll one. be sending no, you clips tonight. I don't, I don't see why. <laughs> oh, j- sure. Yeah. Man, no, I don't, I don't know. That doesn't make sense to me. Bills win easily at home. Titans without Derrick Henry at the Bears without Justin Fields. All right, so you're down on the Cardinals, but you got to agree the Titans and the Bears right now are pretty equivalent, right? Like you got to agree with that one, right? Yeah, I can. I can more or less. I, I think I can see those being a lot closer together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, most people see the yeah. Bills and the Cardinals on the same uh, standing right now, but I, I no. <laughs> what? Yeah, they do, man. I'm going to send you to clips. You'll see. You'll see. But hey, um, uh, the... here's a bold prediction that I'm making this up on the spot. Bills win twice the amount of games than the Cardinals. Oh, wow. That is pretty bold this year. There's a bold prediction for you, man. Yeah. I like it. I mean, I, I'm I'm not with those people who are saying the Cardinals are on this great season and Kyler Murray is about to have an MVP run. I don't agree with them. I'm just saying I've seen a lot of people saying that, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but as far as the Titans and the Bears, I got to give a tick in the favor of the Titans. They have the established quarterback. Levis is developing. He didn't have the best season last season, but he does show off that he is an athletic prototype that can succeed in this league. You know, he's a lot like Josh Allen. The guy's big, he's built, he's strong, he can throw the ball a mile, he's not afraid of contact, which could be to his detriment because sometimes he don't even notice pressure. He just stands in the pocket until he gets railed and just derailed. But um, the guy has the athletic profile to make it in this league and as far as Caleb we really don't know yet we don't know what Caleb's gonna be I don't know why in fantasy football a lot of people are drafting Caleb right along with the veterans who we know are gonna be great in fantasy football but uh, we'll talk about that on a fantasy football podcast I suppose as far as this game taking the Titans on the road yeah so this is um this is the kind of game where these are the games where Caleb Williams' Williams's early career will sort of be judged on because he's playing roughly an equivalent team. Okay, we have two teams that are sort of somewhere in the middle of the pile. And this is where, as a number one overall pick, as being hyped up as the greatest prospect since Trevor Lawrence uh, coming into the league, this is where he has to make his money. These are exactly the kind of games where he has to win and he has to be the reason the Bears win these sorts of games to justify... The hype and to justify where he was where he was selected in the draft. Now you made the argument for Tennessee. Um, I'm going to give I'm going to take the coin flip and give it to Chicago. Not so much because I think they will be great or excellent because I think Caleb Williams is all that like they expect him to be. But rather, it's a doubt about the uh, sort of identity of the Tennessee Titans because. There is one player for the last 10 years. When you heard Titans, that was the one player. That's <laughs> Derrick Henry. And that player is no longer there. And that offensive line that he had his best years behind is also no longer there. Uh, they left. They retired. They're playing, starting out with a young quarterback. And they are very much in rebuilding mode. So this is one which is a very good opener for a young team like Chicago with the flashy potential future stars to get a much needed win i think they get it done they get the bonus of playing at home titans will have a slow offense bears win probably not a big shootout i think it'll be a defensive struggle but bears get it done and they uh well fake hopes continue i guess for another week or maybe they'll be fine uh, who knows <laughs> but i'm picking chicago we have a lot of disagreements this week i'm already noticed yeah right? three out of five so far. yeah absolutely Let's see if let's see if you can disagree with me on this one. Though. The uh, Patriots at the Bengals. <laughs> we can't disagree on this, right? The only thing that would make this game close this might this has to be one of the biggest spreads of the weekend. Looking at it, the only thing that would make this game close is if somehow Jamar Chase decides he does not want to play, which I'm assuming right now he will be out there. He'll be playing. Joe Burrow will be ready to go. This is going to be a 
extremely dominant offense. On the other side, we have no idea what the Patriots offense looks like at all. We, man, that is such a team in disarray right now. The Patriots are probably at their lowest point of the past 25 years, however long it's been, man. This is crazy. That is an easy pick for sure. I'm taking the Bengals at home here. The question is just how many touchdowns are they going to beat the Patriots by? Yeah, give me, uh, give me Cincinnati all the way. Joe Burrow back. The receiving core still there. This Bengals team getting starred has a chance to be as good as they were. Was it 20, 2021, the Super Bowl season? Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a lot of potential. I think they'll do quite well. They'll be in a tough division. Maybe the toughest division in football. We've seen it last year. It was it was hard. But I'd argue they're the best team in that division, maybe along with the Ravens. Should be a great division to watch all year. Patriots are bottom three team. They come in as a bottom three team. They lose the best coach, best defensive head coach in NFL history. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Starting off with a rookie quarterback as well. Patriots are a good candidate if you want to bet on f- first overall pick next year. <laughs> um, if Drake May doesn't work out very well and it's a bad situation for him to get into because I don't think he'll have any sort of stability set up for failure. Um, but this this franchise, through losing two to three key personnel over the last five years, has turned from arguably the best of the century to what I strongly project will be the worst going for qu- quite a long Quite a long time, maybe at least at least a few years uh, until someone can turn around. I have zero hopes for the Patriots, which I guess a lot of people should be happy about seeing that team bad again where they belong, right? But mm-hmm. yes, Cincinnati wins an easy one at home. Texans at the uh, the Colts. Yeah, this is a good rivalry matchup right here. Two teams that are very young and looking to get better. The only problem is I don't really believe in Anthony Richardson, and I do believe in C.J. Stroud. Now, they both added some pieces, and both of them have some pieces coming back off of injury. And they're going to need these teams to be at, or they're going to need their weapons to be at full health. If they want to succeed this season, they're going to go at it and... They're so similar, like I said. But the Texans were on much more momentum coming off of the last season, whereas the Colts were not because Richardson wasn't even playing by the end of the season. And if they keep playing him in the style they were playing him, which is basically like a running back that they just happened to set up at the quarterback position, they keep playing Anthony Richardson like that. He's not going to make it through this season either. He's going to take a beating. Yes, he has the athletic talent to move and get around people, but he's going to get hit. And he showed him, it showed last season. Plus, the guy has only started like 12 games in his entire career through college and the pros. And he hasn't been good in any of them. He's just an athletic freak. We don't know that he can play quarterback for an entire season because he's never done it. Texans coming off of their momentum, absolutely taking them on the road here. Yeah, same thing. Give me Houston for sure. They've had a great last season. They have so much better than anyone thought they would be, and uh, they should be able to carry that with them into into this year. Uh, Colts are kind of struggling, sitting around, not, nothing nothing great really. Now, Anthony Richardson looked like he was very promising for the first sort of few games of last year, then got hurt, and then they continued being mediocre. Yeah, they're just not as far as the Texans are in the rebuild, right? I don't know. I'm not sure if the Colts have found their head coach. We don't know if they found their quarterback. With Houston, we uh, have a pretty good idea that they have, and they could cement that knowledge by repeating what they did last year. So, massive win on the road at a division rival for Houston in Week 1. Jaguars and the Dolphins. Wow, this is tough. Sounded like you were down on the Jaguars earlier, but I am not... That makes this really tough here because the Dolphins are great when it's really warm outside. Now, there's that question if they can keep it up late into the season because they tend to fall off when it gets cold outside. But the Miami guys, the Speed Demons are out there. And I have another bold prediction, and that is that A-Chan will be the rushing leader this season. Oh, man. You know what? I had wrote down some stats. Let me pull those up with my bold prediction here. 
uh, I wrote down that Devon Achan will be the number one RB, 1,500 rushing yards, 1,900 total yards, and 20 touchdowns because they're going to want to do like Shanahan and make Devon Achan the, the, the McCaffrey of that system. Man, the names are just not with me today. But, they, they, you know, uh, Raheem Mostert is what 33 34 years old they're going to fade him out and i think they're going to do it early in the season yeah he might be there for week one week two he's going to fade into the background Devon a chan is going to be the star here as much as i like the jaguars and i think they're going to rebound and have a really great season this year taking the dolphins at home here yeah give me give me miami as well they were in a great um trajectory last year and then they lost their entire pass rush and it just wasn't enough in the playoffs ultimately but at full strength i think this is a very dangerous team for the afc um jaguars i i I don't know they have to it's kind of a like self-finding season kind of getting back into the groove for uh, what was a very disappointing year all things considered last year um, we expected them to take another step and get even better, and they kind of just stagnated and flatlined and didn't really show much improvement. So <clears throat> now it's time <clears throat> to, to put up. So, yeah, you had that year of uh, just consolidating. Can you keep improving with what you've built, or are you just going to stay where you are? Uh, I'm not sure. A lot of questions to, to be answered. I know Miami is at the top uh level if like everyone stays healthy and they can play their game they want to play their most dangerous offense in the league and they have a pretty good defense to, to bolster as well if healthy so dolphins at full strength i'll take him at home the panthers and the saints this is the ugly game right here man i don't even want to pick <laughs> a winner of this this is this is the ugliest game of the weekend for sure Man, they should have set that one up better. I was praising them for picking these matchups, but yes, this is a divisional rivalry, but uh, ugh, both of these teams are on the skids right now. I mean, I guess I gotta, I gotta give a tick in the favor of the Saints here. They do have the veteran quarterback who has proven that he can win at times and sustain, but I'm not big on Allen. I'm not big on Derek Carr. Chris Olave, okay, maybe the only bright spot there. Alvin Kamara is getting old. He's not going to be the backbone of the team anymore. Yeah, maybe a few defensive pieces out there. Uh, But the Panthers, they're coming off of one of the worst seasons ever. They were just shy of doing the entire unfeated season like we saw the Lions do and the Browns do in the past. And that would have been something, because they would have been the first one to lose 17 games. But uh, in the end, they they ended up getting a couple edging them out. So, uh, I don't know. This game's ugly. I don't like it. I'll take the Saints at home. Yeah, kind of agree with that notion. Give me the Saints. There's a couple of pieces. I guess it looks a little bit better. But neither of those teams, I give them very strong playoff hopes this year. I think it'll be between the Falcons and Bucks for the most part, um, judging the offseason changes and also last year. But uh, I guess it's for pride points, so I think uh, New Orleans will be motivated to win this one at home. Carolina, I don't know. Maybe Bryce Young is the like the upside that Carolina needs to make the potentially a better team than the Saints, but uh, just don't have much reason to believe that he has anything around him to be able to do that just yet. So I will take the Saints uh, as, uh, as you did. Vikings and the Giants, and there's another one of those that we we're just talking about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Yeah, the the Vikings are going to push Sam Darnold out there. And like I said, he could have some resurgence. wouldn't even be a resurgence. It would just be a breakout for him because he's never had a great season, to tell you the truth. But, hey, if he gets to play all the season, who's to say he can't end up with a season much like we saw some fifth- and sixth-year quarterbacks do in the past? Possibly. The Giants, I have a reason to believe that they can be much improved this year. And Malik Neighbors is that reason because they finally have a decent receiving core for the first time since OBJ was there with with Manning. It's been quite some time since they've really had a decent receiving core. But now they have that. Who's going to draw the double coverage is the question. I'm guessing it's going to be Malik Neighbors, which is going to kind of hinder his rookie season a little bit. But 
Hey, he'll come through in the end because he's just that good. I think he is the best wide receiver in that draft. And within a couple seasons or so, he's going to be one of the top three, four wide receivers in the entire league. He's just that good. Uh, the Vikings, I want to see them play first before I can put any faith in them. think the Giants are going to be better. I'll be taking the Giants at home. Yeah, this one's, uh, for me, I, th- I find this one pretty tough to pick. It's one of the harder ones, actually. I don't really know what the Vikings' plans at quarterback was going to be had J.J. McCarthy been healthy. I assume they still would have sat him out for a year because they, you know, they can afford to. I have no idea what kind of Giants we're going to see. Is it last year's Giants mm. or the previous year's Giants? Right? Like the previous year's Giants was a playoff team that won a playoff game. And much like the Jaguars I mentioned earlier was looking like on their very much the right trajectory, they would be going up, but they didn't. They stagnated last year. In fact, they became worse. I have no idea what kind of Giants we're going to see. And as, as for the Vikings, they also seem to like be a shell of their, their former self. There is Justin Jefferson. You always have to say for the Giants, they have a veteran quarterback in Sam Darnold at least. Man, this is a tough one to pick. I'm just going to, just for the sake of disagreeing with you, I will take the Vikings. I have no real good reason for this one. This is a coin flip, and we just we just have to see what these teams are looking like on day one. There's nothing else I have to judge it by. I'm, I'm going to take the Vikings. Raiders and Chargers. Yeah, man. This one's all about which pieces are going to make it out there, you know? Raiders don't have a lot going for them. Gardner Minshew can be serviceable at times, but nobody's looking at him to just put a team on his back and win the the big one for them. They're not even going to make it to the playoffs, in my opinion, right now. The Chargers, I mean, how many times do we put faith in them and then they don't come through in the end? I'm guessing Herbert's going to be out there. They don't have a lot of wide receiver pieces either. They have a lot of new guys out there. They have Brendan Rice and Lad McConkey and oh, Jesus, man, the, their wide receiver core is really bad. Hopefully, one of those guys are going to break out. And they have well, what's the other rookie, Cornelius or whatever his name is. Somebody's got to break out. Somebody's got to take the load. It doesn't look good right now. Um, I'll put a little bit of faith in Harbaugh and that running back core, but you know, a lot of those are new guys too. J.K. Dobbins, I'm expecting him to get the start. He's probably the most talent out of there. I wouldn't throw Gus out there. I mean, I'd throw him out there for you know third downs or whatever, whenever you need a bowling ball, but I would not start him. I, I would start J.K. Dobbins if it were me. But the Raiders, you know, don't inspire confidence here. I'll be taking the Chargers at home. Absolutely. Give me, give me the Chargers. Based on Justin Herbert alone, the receiving core is also dwindling. Similar sort of experience as we talked about Earlier with Buffalo, very good quarterback, but maybe not the greatest weapons. But I I really like Jim Harbaugh. I think he's going to have this offense looking brand new. This is going to be a completely different offense. You've already seen him in preseason. He's on the goal line on like with like four yards out on second down. He's bringing out ten linemen. I can't wait to see that. I, I can't wait to see that back in the NFL. It's been such a long time since he did that, and it worked really well. Remember in San Francisco, mm-hmm. he had the, like, the, the Frank Gore, Alex Smith, Colin Kaepernick. It worked very well. But the massive O-line, he always has a fullback. He likes to play jumbo pack, yeah. just tight ends need to block. I love that brand of football. It's always great to see. And NFL defenses are not used to defending it at all anymore. It, it might be more successful now than it was 10 years ago because now n- you see it even less. And the few teams that really run the ball well are dominating. I don't think there's a team that runs the ball well that is not a winning football team. If you think back to the last year or two, it's just that a lot of teams don't really do it anymore. Mm-hmm. So I... Love to see him do it. This is the best quarterback that he's ever had in his career by far as a head coach. I I really want to see what he's able to build here. I think um, the Chargers are going to really look good. And the Raiders are sort of in no man's land. So Chargers win emphatically at home. Broncos and the Seahawks. Yeah, this is pretty much um, old and bland versus... Almost a whole new roster. <laughs> uh, it seems like Peyton just wanted to fire everybody and start over. And he's in the process of doing that. But we have no idea what Bo Nix and the rest of this offense is going to look like. Uh, 
man, like all the names that they had, I know they weren't winning, but all the big names they had are pretty much gone now. Like who was left out there? Uh, Judy's gone, you know, uh, Bradley Tubb is gone. Like, I don't know. I really don't know what this team is going to be. And I don't have a lot of faith in Peyton to begin with. So, Jesus, we'll, we'll see what happens here. The Seahawks, like I said, they're old and bland. They've been pushing this lineup out there for the past couple of seasons, maybe three seasons now. Gino uh, was back, and like that trend usually plays out, a uh, fifth-year, sixth-year quarterback breakout usually tends to be one season, and then they go back to the doldrums. It's kind of what happened to Gino, but here we are. We're still taking a chance on him. I guess new coach wants to stick with him for one more year and see what happens. I guess I'll take... Take uh, slow and steady here against the unknown. I'll take the Seahawks at home. Yeah, I will too. No Pete Carroll at the helm anymore, though he's still there as like some some like side role, like yeah. still giving advice or something. Yeah, um, yeah I'll, I'll take I'll take Seattle. I think Denver. I have no idea what to expect. This is the make or break season, I guess, uh, for for um, the coach, the coaching staff. Because Sean Payton wasn't able to do it with um, with Russell Wilson, got rid of him a uh, very unceremonious way. Now he's gotten to draft his own guy. If this goes wrong, I think this sets up a really bad spiral, which is the sort of you know like okay, coach drafts his new quarterback, and it's the first year of like this working together, so they they need some time to get used to it. And then the coach fails, but he hasn't been there. He has been there for longer, so the coach gets fired, and then the the rookie quarterback now will be confronted with a new coach and has to learn two systems in two years, and it just usually goes downhill. That that sort of stuff usually doesn't work very well. So you kind of kind of got to got to commit to a good coach, um, and let him build for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the owners up in dinner will have the uh, the patience to keep Sean Payton around if this year is another thorough flop. I think. This team will have to win eight games at least to really make the case for, hey, let's keep this project going. It seems to work well. Now, I really like Bo Nix, and I wish him the best. I think he was great in college, and I hope that he does well in the NFL. Whether this is the system, I'm not so sure about, so I will take Seattle. I think they've been uh, building up reasonably well, though I don't particularly have high playoff hopes for them either. They should be able to get it done against Denver. Cowboys and the Browns. Mm. You know, I bet the odds are going to favor the Cowboys, right? They always do, especially in games like this. But this is going to be, this is going to come down to the wire, in my opinion. This is not going to be the Cowboys go up to Cleveland and walk right over the Browns. The Browns were actually surprisingly good last season. They were much better than you would thought they would have been with that roster, right? Yeah. Uh, you take Flacco yeah. and go into the playoffs. And didn't they even win a playoff game? I think they got to, to the second round, right? But did they? Uh, uh, I, don't, I didn't think so. I, don't think they I did. thought they got they got past the, the wild card remember. round. Maybe they, maybe they did, didn't, but they lost to Houston. Yeah, yeah. I mean, either way, so they, yeah, it didn't work round. out. But you got to think with Chubb gone, with Deshaun Watson gone, they did exceptionally well for the roster they were throwing out there. And yeah. they've added some pieces. Chubb's not going to be back yet, but uh, we're going to see uh, Ford uh, run out there at running back. And Watson, we got to see what he's got. Like, I understand you got that huge contract, and it's supposed to be for two more seasons. But if you don't show it right here, how are they going to push you out there for another season? This has to be your last chance. They might even eat that contract to get him out of here if he does not return to form because the entire football world hated them for making the move in the first place. It's such a polarizing character at this point because of his off-field antics. And people were laughing at him. People were making fun of him. People were just hating them for doing it. So Deshaun Watson has to come through right here. He has to be a winner again. Or it's all going to burn up in the trash can. But on the other side of the Cowboys, I I don't think they're as good as everybody thinks they are. But, uh, you know, they're the Cowboys. They have a really good defense. Makes this pick tough, but I'll take the Cowboys on the road. I think they themselves, the Cowboys, are the only people who really think that they are that good, and everyone <laughs> else knows they're not. Yeah. But the thing is, is is the thing for for me, like Browns. Even though they're on paper getting much stronger, and I think they will have a very good season. And I mentioned how strong the AFC North is and is going to be, and how competitive. It's going to be a little bit of growing pains. You got your running back back. You don't know how good he's going to be. Running backs. He's been in the like. 
the shelf life is short if you're a running back. Mm-hmm. You could argue that he's in the back half of his career now, Nick Chubb. After a big injury, he's played for a few years. He might not be as good as he used to be anymore. That offensive player of the year uh, sort of caliber, that that might be very short-lived. Mm-hmm. Deshaun Watson, we have no idea what to expect from him. It's been a while. And the other thing is this. like If the NFL season was just weeks one through four, Dak Prescott would go to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> the Cowboys are really, really good when it doesn't matter all that much. And in like the the first few weeks, and they they have good regular season records. So the, their records are usually better than their teams are, and then the playoffs it sort of comes to light. Um, but they haven't really made any changes. Status quo, you know, it, it looks good enough. So we'll give it another try. I think the Cowboys are going to go into Cleveland and win. As much as I don't like to to say this, I think they have a very strong defense, and offensively they will be solid. CD CD Lamb's been re, uh, re-signed. The offensive line is still looking pretty good, at least on the sort of the left side of the offensive line. Um, and they'll be able to run the ball just fine. They'll be able to throw the ball just fine. I think Cleveland will have a little bit of adjustment, a little bit of getting into the groove offensively uh, that needs to be done. And in week one, Cowboys take advantage and they win in Cleveland. The Washingtons at the Bucks. Yeah, this one's kind of tough. I mean, uh, on the surface, you say, okay, well, the Bucks came off of a really good season. They're going to win this one, right? The Commanders got their new quarterback, and we really don't know what the Commanders are going to be. And they've been historically bad over the, ever since Kirk Cousins left, as a matter of fact. And, but I don't believe in the Bucks, not just because they're division rivals. It's because I've never believed in Baker Mayfield. Him st- sustaining success seems so out of reach to me. I cannot imagine him putting together back-to-back great seasons because he's never done it before. Not even really in college. I mean, this guy had, he was a walk-on at Oklahoma because of the things that happened with him at the Texas Tech or whatever it was. I think he was behind, uh, who, man, he, I think he, oh, oh, well, either way, I don't want to say something wrong right now, but I don't see him putting together two back-to-back seasons like that, so it does make this game kind of intriguing. But since the Bucks are at home and it's game one, I expect a lot of what happened at the end of last season to happen over again for week one. I'll take the Bucks at home. Yeah, I, I'm also taking the Bucks. See, this is the thing. Like, um, I'm kind of done not giving Baker Mayfield the due really? respect, right? When when he he was drafted okay he was drafted six years ago he came league in 2018. Had you asked me then and probably you as well and many other people he was the first overall pick but we knew what he was about and what he was like. Is that guy gonna be in the league, let alone starting, for a borderline playoff team in six years? Mm-hmm. No way, no shot. Forget about it. Right, not happening. Like. He'll I'll, he he'll be happy if he can be a backup somewhere to to like make the rookie contract money and then just go somewhere like go play spring league. That's what I thought, right? That's what a lot of people thought mm-hmm. about Baker Mayfield because that was like historically one of the most uh, ridiculed first overall selections ever, and rightfully so, right? It was a, it was a ridiculous pick. It, it was then, and it's looking back, it still is. Uh, given that there was Josh Allen, and Lamar Jackson were all available, right? Mm-hmm. But. Look, Baker Mayfield's been better than I thought he ever would be. Mm. He's like, I'm not hearing the crap about him in the news, like in off the field stuff. No. Like, I don't know, he's quieted down, right? He's not doing all these antics, pregame antics he did in college. Other players are doing that. A lot, a lot better players, a lot worse players as well. Uh, they're doing that and drawing that sort of unwanted attention. He's not doing any of that. He's he's turned into a professional, a veteran quarterback who's just fine, you know, manages the game well. He's an, He is an average, a decent quarterback. And being that, you're going to make a real good living in the NFL. It'd be a long shelf life. He can stick around another 10 years if he keeps keeps doing that. Maybe not all with the same team, maybe not to overwhelming success, but it's good enough to have the Bucks at a decent level. They're not going to fall off a cliff. Now, on the Washington side, now, Jaden Daniels was my favorite quarterback coming into this draft. I think he should have been the first overall pick. So I have high, high hopes for him. Not so much for the team around him, though. And uh, they're knee-deep in the rebuild, right? So I will give this to the Bucks at home. I think, uh, you know, they're coming off. They were a playoff team. They've been fundamentally very solid, good receiving core. 
decent quarterback, decent defense, very serviceable team, top to bottom. I think they'll still have an uphill battle to sort of fight the Falcons for the division, but they, they're the one team I'm taking seriously, right? If the, so, okay, the Bucks are winning the division, I would not be surprised by it terribly, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Saints or Panthers, on the other hand, yeah, no, I'm not buying that. But if you think that the Bucks have a chance to, to take the Falcons down, I, I would believe it. So I'm giving them credit for what they are. They're not going very. They're not going to a Super Bowl or anything, right? But nah. they have a chance of competing for a playoff spot come December, and uh, it starts by winning this one. This one at home. Mm-hmm. Two more very top high class games to uh, round out the f- first week, and the first one is uh, well, it's a grudge match, I guess, for last year's uh, play. Maybe the best playoff game we saw uh, last year. Rams and the Lions. Yeah, definitely. And I did check while you were talking. I was afraid I was going to say something wrong because I have the cold, but I was right. He was a walk-on at Texas Tech, played behind Patrick Mahomes, and then he was a walk-on at Oklahoma before he finished out his yeah. career there and played against uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes in one of those games too. Uh, but yeah, Rams and Lions. This one may be the game of the week right here. I am high on the Rams, and I am super high on the Lions. I hope the Lions can hold up to the expectations they have this year because they have looked so good for the last half of 2022 and all of 2023 this looked like one of the top three teams in the entire league they need to hold on to that i believe they can they have the coach they have the players they have the defense they have aiden hutchinson out there they are in good shape to go all the way deep into the playoffs and possibly make a Super Bowl run this year. The Rams, on the other hand, all their pieces are healthy. They're going to be a formidable opponent. I know you don't like that because you're a 49ers fan, but they're going to be really good this year. Sean McVay is going to whip this team back into shape, and I would be afraid to play them twice this year, but we'll see how that plays out. Right here, Lions, though, I still think they have the edge and this is revenge match. I didn't even realize that until just this second. This is revenge match for both quarterbacks. They love the controversy right here in week one. I'll be taking the Lions at home. Yeah, you better pick your MVP, right? Yes. If you told me Jared Goff's losing here to the Rams. <laughs> yeah, uh, that would suck. I would have to look, look back at what we said, what we said we talked about last year. <laughs> I agree with you, though. This is a close one. Look, I'll say this. The Rams are probably the best, the second best team in the NFC West. Mm. Um, and they're they're sort of in the, the the Buccaneers position to me. I don't really give much plausibility to either the Cardinals or Seattle being a serious contender for the division. The Rams have looked very well, very good. They've drafted extremely well in 2023. They may have drafted very again. My favorite for defensive rookie of the year, Jared Verse, is an LA Ram. Uh, they have Jimmy Garoppolo for crying out loud on the <laughs> roster. Like, how did that happen, right? Um, so. Look, this is a good team. I don't think they're going to win the division. The Niners are still the best team in the NFC, the best roster, and they're going to get it done ultimately. But yes, the Rams have to be taken seriously. We know that the Lions are a top-tier team. We know that they're an elite team, and we know that the only reason they were not playing in the Super Bowl is because of inexperience, is because they hadn't been in that setting for a half a century, and they choked away a massive lead. Uh, otherwise, we'd be talking about the, we'd be talking about the Lions as potentially the the favorites to win the NFC this year, um, and maybe they are, maybe they are like up there. So I will give this to the Lions. I think they've built something very special, and if they can sustain it for another season, I think everyone will be taking them seriously. So Lions win at home in a statement game, mm-hmm. and then to uh, round it off, <laughs> Monday night, maybe the high highest quality game. Of the of the uh, the week, Jets at the Niners. Uh, yeah, see that's tough though, because I really don't know what to make of the Jets. I know Aaron Rodgers is going to be out there, but he's going to be back yeah. to form. That's why I pick the Lions and the Rams. I think that's the best one of the weekend. But here we go. This there's a reason why they put this here, right? As the prime time game, of course, it's Aaron Rodgers versus Kyle Shanahan. You want me to say Purdy, right? <laughs> hmm. I, I take Purdy seriously. I'm, I'm not going to discredit Purdy. Uh, you know, They're know. never on the field at the same time. It's Aaron <laughs> Rodgers and the Niners. The Niners defense is Purdy versus Jets defense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was going to ask you this because you probably noticed that. Has Aaron Rodgers ever beat Kyle Shanahan as a 49er? Oof. 
I, historically, I I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of a time, maybe a regular season matchup. But maybe they lost maybe the very playoffs. early on, if they played in 2016, 17, 18, when the Niners were rebuilding, maybe took like advantage with a cheap one. There could have been. Like, uh, no. Falcons. I think I think there must have been one, right? Well, I know Shanahan with the Falcons. Aaron Rodgers lost to him because yeah. that was the 2016 yeah. run and uh, beat him in the yeah, NFC playoffs. Championship. Yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if yes. Yeah, I don't know if Aaron Rodgers has ever beaten Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe with maybe not. not definitely not as a head coach, right? Maybe not even as an OC. I uh, feel like he might have though. I feel like he might have like yeah, maybe there was when a... the Niners were bad. They, like remember, they, like they weren't continuously good. They were really good um, for a year, and then yet the the year it, it was like up and down, right? Yeah. The year that Garoppolo got hurt, they were kind of bad. True. And then Garoppolo like did not get hurt, and they were good. And then the next year's hurt again, right? Yeah. So that you never even know with him. Yeah, I was wondering um, if they. Even so there were that there year. were some ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah, there were some ups and downs. Yeah, true. But either way, it seems like this could be setting up for another one of those games that Shanahan's the hump that Aaron Rodgers can't get over, right? Because we really don't know what they're going to look like. We did not get to see him outside of one drive last season. Mm play for the jets i don't know man I, I really don't know what direction the jets are headed in here a lot of people think just because it's aaron Rodgers that they're going to be dominant that they're going to make a super bowl run right but 49ers are old faithful with shanahan there purdy is a really good quarterback they have a really good running back christian mccaffrey they have really good wide receivers brandon Ayuk is set for the season he got his contract they're going to be out there george kittle top three tight end in the league i'll take the 49ers at home yeah, all guns blazing, right? Here's how you here's how you really break me mentally this week. Is if you yeah, you gave me this game and said, "Hey, which of these quarterbacks is more likely to be the MVP this year?" Uh, and I'm I'm going I'm going to I have this infinite loading screen thing going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you ask me that. I I have no idea. Um that so that's maybe how you get there. But look, I'll take I'll take it away of the topic we can talk about it after. I'll take the Niners as well, obviously, right? Homerism for me personally, also for them because they play at home. Uh, they were the best team in the AFC last year. Uh, they had arguably, they have arguably still the best roster if all the pieces are back and uh, like sort of from injury and Trent Williams is still like up in the air, who was by the way a massive piece. The Jets are so reliant on this Aaron Rodgers character, you know, being there, not being healthy, and being all of who he used to be. He's in his forties now. Look. When he's at his best, he's been the best quarterback we've seen maybe ever. Like as a as a straight up quarterback, the guy who throws the football, like no one no one has been this good. If he's been at his best. Can he still do that with a new team after an injury? Well into his forties. I don't know. Okay. I'm I'm not the one to doubt him necessarily, but we've seen it happen to everyone. Okay. The last year's Peyton Manning in Denver not, wasn't pretty. The last year's Tom Brady wasn't pretty. It happens to all of them eventually. When and how and if it'll happen to Aaron Rodgers, I have no idea. But this team is fully invested in this season. Like the, the, this is this last this last year with the Jets in this contract. Remember, he signed for two years. This is the Jets have one year to have a great season and make a playoff push. That's all they have right now, and they're not thinking any further than that. Um, so it it better work out for them. I think if if he stays healthy, they have a legitimate chance. We've talked about how Buffalo, for example, has these weaknesses, the cracks in the armor. Uh, we know that you know Miami deals with the same issues the Jets do. It's been injuries in the last year. So yes, they have a shot, even though the division is tough on paper. I'm still taking the Niners, just <laughs> top to bottom. They're the better roster. All of those offensive weapons, I just don't see anyone keeping up with them um, consistently. If you have all these guys playing at the level they did last year, Brock Purdy potentially even getting better. Remember, he this is his first offseason as a starter preparing because he could not throw a football until like August in last, last year's offseason. He could not take part in anything because he was rehabbing that injury from, from the, the Philadelphia game. So there's good reason to believe he will come in better and more prepared and in that case, he should be a, a top, top, top tier quarterback right from the start and very consistently so. 
uh, which is exactly what that team needs. I'll take the Niners to win at home, but it'll be a barn burner of a game, and I, I can't wait to see it. It'll be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought I thought you were really going to blow my mind and pick the Jets for some reason. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do it. I think I... Did I pick the Jets last year? I, I would love to know it, because they opened also on Monday night against Buffalo. Mm. Who did we pick in that game? Hold did on, we pick I the can, Jets? Did we pick the Bills? I can look back here and find out. Oh. Although, without looking back, do you remember that game? Ooh, uh, I, do, you, do I remember the game happening? Yeah, do you remember what happened in the game? For the Jets and the Bills? Yeah. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers went down. Exactly, and and then and do you, do you know how the game ended? Do you remember that? Um. Uh, oh, you know what? The Jets still won that game, didn't they? The Jets still won the game. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Was yeah. it like twenty to thirteen or something? It was. It was ter- It was something terrible. It was like thirteen yeah. to nine. It was something yeah. awful. But they won the game, which is like the most forgettable thing about the entire game. <laughs> yeah. That was the the strangest one. The, Oh, yeah. I think I think they had three interceptions of Josh Allen. No one. I picked the Bills in that game, and you picked the Jets. Wow, and I I, I somehow got it right for all the wrong reasons. I for, I totally forgot about that until you jogged my memory. People thought, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, people thought like, oh, we're still gonna be okay. It doesn't matter that Rogers is gone. <laughs> yes, yeah, that didn't work out. I mean, they won that game though, surprisingly. But the Bills had a lot to figure out at the first of last season. Makes me wonder if they're going to get off to a slow start this season, yeah. also. Maybe. I mean, uh, I'm afraid for the Bills, man. Uh, don't let the Cardinals beat you for one. But it's just, I don't know. Like each year, they just seem to get weaker. But they still have Josh Allen, so they're still going to be propelled. Like they're still going to be good. They just can't keep taking pieces away and still making it yeah. deep into the playoffs, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess so. Yeah, but we'll we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what they can do. The division's getting tougher, you know. Yeah, Miami's it's just a healthy season away from being great, and uh, you know, Jets. Certainly, they're they're all in this year. Yeah, yeah, they have to be. <laughs> Could you imagine if something happens to Rogers again? Like, oh boy, man, that 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 franchise could move. Yes, rename. Yeah, I mean, think about it. they haven't been good since like Super Bowl three, like, the sixties, yeah. maybe the early seventies. Hey, you know, there was this one. There was randomly this one year with Rex Ryan and Mark Sanchez. <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. For, for a completely inexplicable reason, played really well and went to the championship game. Yeah, that's true. Mark Sanchez. That was before the butt fumble. Yeah, um, but after that, nothing. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was thinking they had one year with Fitzpatrick where they were halfway decent, but they they didn't win anything. Of course, I think Man. they might have gotten knocked out right before the playoffs. I think it was like a ten win season. But they got knocked out for right before the playoffs anyway, so it didn't really matter. But yeah, man, if, if Jesus Christ, like they they put all their eggs in this basket, and they have some superstars on the team, and you have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, you have a great defense, you you have a ton of defensive weapons, all those Alabama guys out there that are just entrenched veterans, grizzled veterans at this point. This is your season. If you don't like, if you blow this and or something happens where you don't make it, like your fans are not, they're not even gonna come to games anymore. No, nah. <laughs> they're gonna give up nah. at some point. <laughs> Find a different team, like you're yeah. cursed yeah. if that if that happened again. Yeah, absolutely. No way. That'd have been like um, the worst contract ever for sure. Oh yeah, it'd be between Aaron Rodgers and Deshaun Watson. Yeah, 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 I guess, I guess so. But at least Watson has some more time on the. On the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully he can change it this year too. I know a lot of people don't want you to say hopefully he can change it because they just hate Deshaun Watson. Like the, the, yeah. his off the field antics, like I said, have 
just made people absolutely hate this guy. And, you know, I get it. He should have never done what he did. But I always try to judge the people just with their on-field work, you know. And, and the guy was an elite quarterback at one point in time. He was a top three quarterback in the league at one point in time. Maybe he can get back to that point and the Browns will be okay. But if he doesn't, like I said, that, that will go down as the worst contract of all time. If 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 so, if so. But yeah. if they have a great season, then maybe it was it would have been worth it. Yeah, yeah. And people are forgiven. Of course, next year is yeah, yeah. Of course, next year is going to the Vikings, right, to complete the story arc. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> yeah, I have to, I have to. Well, you would have thought yeah. it would have been this season, but of course they signed for. T- but that works out, right? That still works out in the story arc because he didn't get to play last season. So now he can finish out the contract with the Jets and go through the Vikings next season. And do the complete farve. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's see. But first of all, he's got a season to play with the Jets. And, yep. uh, yeah. They definitely need him to, to be there for it. We're just about at an hour, so that was all of our picks for this week. Uh, do you have anything to add for this week? Any other like predictions or anything you want to make? Uh, let's see. I don't think there's any more that I left on there that I really wanted to get out to. No, oh uh, well, I'll say this really quick. Uh, last season, I picked that f- five teams from the West divisions are going to the playoffs. Didn't quite happen. Yes, I, I remember. I, that. I think we only got three of them. Didn't happen. But this year, I'm mm. saying five teams from the North divisions will be in the playoffs. Five from the North. Yeah, that's. Yeah. More, I can see that. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense. AFC, it can plausibly be three. Yes. And then you have the Lions, and then you have the yeah. What do you have? Yeah, Packers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely. Yeah, no, that, it would have to be those five, but yeah, it's yeah, possible. yeah, definitely Packers and Lions for sure. Yep, I think that that yeah, could absolutely. be the one this year. Okay, uh, let's see. But yes, that is week one. Everyone at home, please let us know what you think about these games. Do you have any uh, picks that strongly vary from ours, or anything interesting uh, that you think is going to happen? Please let us know in the comments. Drop us a like, and we will be back with, like, the better production quality and video and everything, I think, in week four. Until then, I'm traveling around. I don't have a whole setup and everything. So, uh, by week four, we'll be better better again with the whole production quality. But NFL season's back. Hooray. Let us know what you think, and uh, we will see you in the next one. Deuces. You should check the scoreboard, huh? Check, check, check the scoreboard, huh?